Hey there, you're watching the Aussie Vim Guru, and today we're going to show you how to manage Revit warnings in Dynamo. So how to easier review them, basically. Um, so reviewing warnings in Dynamo. So um, this is part of a presentation that I'm putting together uh, for Dynamo Sydney user group. I would have already run the presentation by the time this is released. Uh, but if you are in the Sydney area, I highly recommend that you check out the group. Um, we meet about once every two months, and you can find us on Meetup. Um, and always feel, feel free to reach out to me as well if you're interested. Um, so Revit warnings, uh, I guess the bottom line is don't ignore them. <laughs> Everyone I work with tends to ignore warnings until they're a problem because um, they are really trying to tell us that there's a problem, there's something wrong and we need to address it to fix it. So you can find it on the manage tab uh, just in that green highlighted button uh, under inquiry uh, where you can find the warnings dialog. And it looks a little bit like this. So most of you have probably seen this before but there's a lot of types of warnings. Um, I think there's more than 300 types of warnings you can have um, and I find on average most models have anywhere between uh, 50 up to 20,000 warnings at least uh, the longer your model and the more you ignore them the more you get and There's things like overlapping walls unenclosed rooms rooms being in the same region as each other lines being slightly off axis um, so not quite straight or not quite at a good angle and duplicate elements sitting on top of each other and a lot of other types of warnings and obviously if we ignore them a lot of bad things can happen so the first thing is that the more warnings you have the slower the Revit model is because the Revit model is having to allow exceptions for certain things that it doesn't want to accept so things like walls being on top of each other it's quite hard for programs like Revit to handle these things without making exceptions to deal with them. So a warning is a way of telling us, I don't, I don't really want to do this, but I'll let it happen, but I'll tell you it's a problem. Um, there's things like rooms being unenclosed. Obviously that's bad because we're not scheduling the area of that room. And the same with uh, rooms being in the same region because they're, they're sharing the same area. So they don't actually make sense because they're overlapping. Um, and on top of that, uh, if a wall is slightly off axis, uh, you can't actually dimension it. So when you come to document your project, you may find that you can't even put dimensions on your project. So these warnings are really trying to tell us we need to address these things because they will make our life very hard over time. And there's a lot of other types of warnings as well, but they're probably the biggest ones that I find of affect projects. So they take a long time to review. Um, I'll show you how I used to review them before I used Dynamo, and it's very slow compared to what it can be like. So we're going to use Dynamo to review warnings data using a few custom nodes. So we're going to use the clockwork package in order to reset the graphic overrides of our elements. And we're going to look at a package called Archilab and a package called Bang in order to review the warnings in our models. Um, I like the name Bang, it's a cool package name. So whoever made it, uh, good work, good choice. Um, so we're using Dynamo 2.0.3 today, but I believe that most versions of Dynamo can work with these nodes. They've been around quite a while. Um, so without further ado, let's jump into our warning field model. So I've taken the Autodesk sample project and I've just triggered a few more warnings. By default, there's two warnings on the project. I've went and added another 16, um, but I've added quite a few types of warnings. We've got some rooms in the same region, some lines that are slightly off axis, some walls off axis, identical elements in the same place, some highlighting floors, uh, walls and room separation lines overlapping, highlighted walls, and then just a stair that can't reach the top that it's trying to reach. So usually when I used to review warnings, I'd start at the top and I'd expand the warning and I'd pick the element and I'd go show me this element. It would say, I'm going to go find a view where I can show you the element. And it would say, do you want to find a view? Okay. It would take you to an, a room and then you'd be able to go and check the two elements that are causing the problem. Um, and you do that over and over until you finished. Um, so very slow. Uh, what you can do with Dynamo is actually highlight elements triggering warnings, which I find is really effective. So what we'll do is we'll just start off a new script and I'll just set us to manual mode. We'll do a save as and we'll just make a demo script. So demo script. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to move my graphics out of the way because we're only dealing with warnings. Okay, so I'm just going to search for warning. And if you've got Archilab and Bang installed, you should see quite a few things come up. The one that we want is called get warnings. And if I run this, it will go and grab all the warning elements in my project. In this case, I have 18. Obviously this isn't telling me a lot about the element yet. So what I need to do is actually get the elements that relate to those warnings. So there should be a node called warning elements, I believe in Archilab. Uh, I'm just looking for it now, there it is. So if I connect this up here, it will tell me all the elements that are associated with warnings. Um, so you can see that most of these warnings contain at least two elements. So you can see that in that case, we're getting 
two elements sometimes, one element sometimes. There are other systems as well within this package I highly recommend you check out. One is the ability to assign severity ratings to the warnings um, using a warnings report. So have a look at the warning library from CSV as well, because that will let you actually tell your warnings how bad they are and you can more heavily assess your warnings based on what your company deems to be bad warnings versus ignorable warnings. Anyway, we're gonna get the element ID of those elements. So we're gonna get the warning element ID. So we're gonna connect this up to our warning element. And from there, this should give us the ID of all of these elements. Great, so now we can see the element ID. So what we need to do now is flatten this list and some elements will be involved with at least at least one warning. So we're gonna do a unique items list so that we only see that element once. Because often things can trigger multiple types of warnings. Maybe a wall slightly off axis, but it's also highlighting with another wall. In that case, it would be involved in two warnings. What we need to do now is get all elements in active view, which is an out of the box node. And we're gonna get the element ID of all those elements as well. So now we really just need to check, is, is this element triggering a warning visible in our view? So we have 518 things visible here, but only 29 things that warnings relate to. Keep in mind, we may not be able to see everything in this particular view. For example, a room, I can't see that in 3D. So I won't see some of my elements relating to my warnings. So just be mindful that maybe you might need to be in a floor plan sometimes, sometimes in a section, sometimes in 3D. But in this case, we're gonna work in a 3D view because the majority of our warnings will have something in 3D. So we're gonna use a list contains node at this point. And we're gonna say in my warning list for each item here, is this present at level two, level two of my list? So we wanna find out if these elements are present in our active view. So we should get trues and falses for all our elements. If I set this to longest, I believe. So longest lacing, and now we can see which elements are triggering warnings and which ones aren't. So that, that enables us to basically split our list into elements that are triggering warnings and elements that aren't. So we're gonna use a list uh, filter by Boolean mask at this point and filter all our elements in our view by the mask of whether it's triggering a warning in that particular view. And now we can use the element override in view node because we're gonna make all our elements triggering warnings look a particular way and all our elements not triggering warnings look another way. So we're gonna take our warnings that are our elements that are triggering warnings and our elements that aren't. And the way this node works is you can just turn things off if you want. So you can just hide the elements not triggering warnings. I prefer to make them just more half-toned and transparent and then really highlight the ones that are working, that are causing warnings, sorry, not working. Um, so what we need to do is override graphic settings now. So we're gonna look override graphic settings. Uh, might need to might need to look it up in my, my dictionary instead. Sometimes the search terms don't quite correlate. Uh, override graphic settings is what I'm looking for. It can be hard to find certain, certain nodes sometimes can be harder to find. I find the keywords that I find them under uh, aren't always literally their name by properties. There we go, so override graphic settings by properties. So we're gonna set a whole bunch of overrides for both of these. So let's just copy one for the ones that do comply and ones that don't. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build some colors. So we need color by ARGB because we're gonna override the projection color and also the projection line color of our, of our setup. So what we need to do now is make some numbers. So alpha is always 255 because we don't want our color to be transparent. Um, and then we just set up a couple of numbers. Usually I, I make a 125 and a zero as well. So we have half, full and empty. Um, so we're gonna do 255 alpha and let's just make our outlines, uh, just make them yellow. Let's try out something a bit more funky. So we're gonna fill in our RGB and then let's make our, oh sorry, our perfection, perfection fill. We'll make it orange actually. So I've made that orange and we'll make the outline yellow. Uh, so that's just red and green at 255 and blue at zero. Okay, and what we need to do also is override the fill pattern to solid. Because I'm in hidden line at the moment, so I need to be able to see the face of these elements. So we're just gonna override the fill pattern to the projection fill pattern here. 
So essentially this should override the way that our warning elements look. Um, I'll just do the same for the one below here and then we'll we'll go and update. So what I might do is actually just copy this and then move this down here. And what I usually like to do with these elements is make them 100% transparent. So we're gonna set transparency to 100. And I also like to half tone them. Usually I'll also set their solid pattern to fill so that they don't have any solid, any fill pattern, such as a line, uh, like a, a line hatch or something like that. Um, so we'll set half tone to true. And let's just make our projection fill color, um, in this case is going to be white, but it probably doesn't matter. But what I might do is I'll just set it anyway, just in case some elements have a surface pattern color. It's gonna be 100% transparent anyway, so it probably really doesn't matter. Uh, let's just make our projection line color just mid gray just RGB at 125. Okay, so at this point we have a script that should just work. Um, so this can be like a one touch script in Dynamo Player, so which is great. But what I might do is just run it and show you how it looks. So in our active view, if I run this script, it should override my elements. Uh, interesting, it hasn't. Why is it not overridden? What am I filtering, I guess? Uh, I'm filtering the ID. I need to filter the elements. That's better. Run. Now it should work. I was originally filtering the ID in the mask by accident. I need to go back one step. Cool. And there you go. And like, how effective is that? So easy to see what's triggering warnings now. I can really see where they're occurring. So I can go here and go, why is this fireplace triggering a warning? Ah, it's triggering a warning because it has two fireplaces on top of each other. Um, so really easy uh, to work with now, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, but when I'm done reviewing these, I want to have a way to reset my view as well. So what I'm going to do is just set this up as the first part. So let's just call this script highlight warnings. So what I'm going to do is make a new script now. And I'm just going to get one node for this really. I'm just going to go reset graphic overrides. And we need to get a node from clockwork now. Um, so I think it's reset override. Reset element overrides. There we go. And the elements are going to be all elements in active view. And then the view is going to be our current view. So we need to get our current document. And this is actually a really useful node for if you're working with a team that loves to override the graphics of elements and you don't want them to, you can use this to reset all the, the elements in a view. Um, so an interesting, interesting tool beyond this particular use. So we're just gonna connect up our active view and then we'll just do a save as and we'll call this reset, reset graphics. Okay, so if I run this, we should expect that we'll be able to undo our graphic override of our warning elements. Right, and we've just reset that. So we have another part of our script. We're gonna build one last part, which is gonna let us take particular types of warning categories and highlight them differently. Say that we want to isolate just overlapping walls, but we don't want to focus on the other ones. We want to see all the warnings, but we only want to focus on a few at a time, which is usually, usually how I work anyway. I try to sort of go through the most severe categories to the least severe. So at this point, we need to actually use the package called Bang, um, which again is a, a pretty fun name. I like, I like the name of that package, that's cool. Um, so we're going to go, we'll just go straight down to Bang actually, because Bang's a pretty small package. Um, so we're just going to open up element warning. Actually, you know, we'll, we'll go to selection and we'll go all warnings of type. And what this actually does is it sources all the types of warnings available in your model and lets you pick one. So we can make this a dynamo player compatible, compatible script. So let's just rename this to warning type and we'll make this an input in dynamo player. Okay. So we need to actually from there, go to all elements in active. Oh, actually, we don't even need to do that because we're already going to override all our elements anyway. So all this is going to do is apply another override to a few of those elements. So what we need to do is we need to get all failing elements. So there's a node here called failing elements you can feed in. And this will literally just give you all the elements that are related to those warnings. So it's a little bit more direct than Archilab, but it filters down a lot more. So we need to pick a warning type. So let's say we only want to do... Uh, mm, identical instances in the same place. Let's just do that one. And it should limit it to just those elements. But Bang doesn't deal with all warnings at once like Archilab does. Okay, so we can flatten our list first. 
and then we can put in our unique items to that list as well just to get all the elements that relate to that particular warning type and again all we're going to do from there is just override the graphics in the view uh, but we're going to build a little toolkit that we can use with Dynamo Player now okay so I might just do a save as and go and get a couple of the nodes we've already set up, you know, up in our other script so let's just call this isolate warning type so I'm just going to go back and open up highlight warnings and just copy this this section of the script because we're essentially going to actually I'll take the one that highlights instead so I think it's more similar to what we actually want to do so I'm just going to copy that hold that on my clipboard and I'm going to go to isolate warning type and the great thing about Dynamo is you can actually move things between clipboard as you go between scripts and it remembers them so pr pretty cool so I'm just going to move this down move this up so our elements we're feeding in and what we'll do is we'll just highlight them as let's say we'll do blue so we'll make our protect projection fill uh, maybe like a light blue so we'll just do half green full blue no red and then we'll make our lines uh, pure blue so we'll just make our RNG 0 and blue 255 so what we can do now is actually highlight a particular category of warnings after we've highlighted all of our warnings but the way it'll work is if we run this now just as it stands you'll see that it highlights just those elements relating to that warning um, so what I'll do I'll undo that and then we're going to run our warnings out of Dynamo Player instead so I'm just going to open Dynamo Player and I'll show you how I usually work with warnings using this little toolkit that I've built because I actually use these types of uh, scripts quite often when I'm auditing models and doing a high level review um, so really easy and you can obviously go much more detailed with how you filter these as well there's more data available on warnings if you need so definitely have a look at these packages further okay so let's just say first I want to highlight warnings I just press play in my active view and I should be able to see those elements once it finishes it's a little bit slower out of Dynamo Player but not that much slower notice maybe it's like double the time to run but obviously the user doesn't have to open Dynamo as a result okay so we've isolated our warnings and at this point um, let's just say I want to review maybe just one type of warning so we're going to go to the inputs of isolate warning type and let's just look at there are identical instances I'll play this and there you go I can see my identical instance elements um, so I can go and have a look and see how oh, we've got maybe a little bit too much wine so we've got two wine bottles on top of each other um, I'd probably just ask my users why they're modeling bottles of wine anyway <laughs> but um, anyway there we go so we can really quickly just fix those warnings obviously as you fix the warnings it doesn't say that there are warnings still there so what you can do then is just reset your graphics in your view and you can highlight warnings again once you've started addressing them and now you see that they no longer trigger a warning um, likewise I can go in and get rid of this overlapping floor and I can find these walls that are slightly off axis and go oh, why, why are they there they don't need to be there someone shouldn't have added those I can see I've got skylights on top of skylights you can always still check what the warning is as well um, so yeah quite quite straightforward I've got two fireplaces at once and we can reset highlight warnings so you can see how smooth this makes the workflow of reviewing warnings now and I can go in isolate warning type and see oh what have we got now let's go we've got highlighted walls overlap and there you go you can see that there, there are the walls there as well you can also go into floor plans as well and look at them there instead so again I can I can check multiple rooms in the same enclosed region and I can see that these are my rooms so really quick um, and really easy so hopefully that really helps you uh, review and address your warnings don't ignore them because <laughs> I know everyone does um, but hopefully that helps um, if you if you um, have any comments or feedback feel free to leave it down below um, I'll be going back to my standard videos after this one now that I've finished my my Dynamo Sydney user group videos uh, but I'll still be focusing on Dynamo quite heavily so thanks for watching today if you're not already following and subscribing feel free to do so and hopefully I'll see you in the next video thanks take care Bye.